Hi, I'm Maddie Hockaday, also known as the Anne of this relationship. And I'm Holly Constant, the Leslie. We love Parks and Rec. We love behind the scenes. And we love each other. This is literally the best Parks and Recreation rewatch show. We're your park pals. There's a park and some pals and there's also therapy too. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Park Pals. Welcome. Oh, my God. <laughs> Have we got <laughs> another treat for you? Um, I cannot even believe it. And I won't say too much because obviously um, we just want to get to the interview. But we talked to Jay freaking Jackson, a.k.a. Purd freaking happily. <sighs> I can't believe it happened to us. I know. Um, I think we were in complete shock the entire interview. <laughs> I think so too he also gave off like an energy that he was like talking really fast and so I felt like a fangirl at the same time in a great way uh, right. I don't think it was bad but I was like oh god ah, I can't believe I'm talking to purd but <laughs> okay I do want to preface some of this for the fans really fast so we did a lot of name dropping in this so I wanted to explain that before everyone listens like whose names he dropped uh, now I know I'm dealing with mega fans here so I know I don't have to explain too much but just for inclusivity uh, we mentioned Catherine Hahn who who, uh, is Jen Barkley, the political consultant, also now on WandaVision, and she's done a ton of stuff. Like we talked about people, you'll hear it in the interview, people slept on Katherine Hahn. Don't sleep on Katherine Hahn. Watch everything that she's been in. Um, and then... Mo Collins, we talk about Mo Collins. She is uh, Joan Calamezzo. Also, we've mentioned her in other, uh, you know, podcast, but you know who that is. And then Patton Oswalt. Um, so Patton is uh, the guy in just a friendly reminder. First of all, he's a huge comedian. And if you don't know him or not following him, you need to be don't sleep on Patton. He is amazing. Got some great stand up. But as far as Parks and Rec, he is the one who in Ted Party who stays with Leslie in the old house and sees who can be like more old timey. And he does that whole Star Wars fan fiction filibuster thing, <laughs> which by the way, was largely improvise like That's there's amazing. a lot of extended versions of that you need to look that up it is insane Maddie um <laughs> so yeah he made a lot of that up um so those are who we talk about second thing real fast is that we did talk about ratings as well um he did mention that uh Parks and Rec did not have good ratings at the beginning. So like when he went to his audition, he wasn't really expecting much, which like totally is fair because in all of my research, Parks and Rec truly, as much as we hate to say it, was not as popular as it was in season three. I think season one and two were a little rocky. They're still amazing. I don't know why the ratings were bad, truthfully, because they're all awesome as we are seeing. Um, but ratings is stupid and means nothing. I hate network television to that to some extent, because obviously, as we know, they like ratings don't mean that it's a bad show. You know what I mean? So it's all about commercials too and what sells. So that's a whole other marketing fucking ploy that I hate. But regardless, just a disclaimer that he does mention that. And as Parks and Rec fans, don't get offended because it is technically true. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, we did have some technical issues. He kept coming in and out a little bit. So um, if there are choppy moments, that is why. But we really cleaned it up. But you guys, we basically partied with Purd. And he was just like so nice and so into it and so willing to tell us all of his stories and so answering all of our questions, which you'll hear. And I won't talk too much longer. But I just... Speechless. It's yeah. amazing. Uh. Everybody's so, going to love it. Yes, everyone's going to love it. Well, okay, you guys. Is there anything else, Maddie, that you wanted to say about Purd? No, I think, um, you know, just he was really genuine. He was really forthcoming with a lot of information. I really appreciated talking to him. And I think you guys are going to learn a lot about his journey that you might not have known. Mm -hmm. So he has a really cool trajectory. And I think it was really, I think it, it was really eye-opening for me and hopefully for some of you that like, your life can be going one way and can change mm -hmm. for the better, like mm -hmm. just like that. So absolutely. Well said. Enjoy that. Yes. Okay. Well, without further ado, please welcome Jay Jackson. There's a park and some pals and there's also therapy too. Well, yeah. How you guys doing? Oh my gosh. We're so good. This is Maddie. Hi. Uh, Hi, Maddie. Oh, hey there, Maddie. No, I see you. <laughs> the perfect timing because Maddie just got back. So this is great. Purd, 
thank you. Yeah, you guys, you guys picked a good, you, you picked a good day to do this because without remorse, it's just released on Prime Video. It's a big okay. uh, Michael B. Jordan movie, and Patton Oswalt saw it and tweeted it out <laughs> that there's a Parks and Recreation universe cla- uh, clashing with the new big movie. <laughs> no, so it's going way. viral at this very second. <laughs> Stop it! That yeah. is perfect. Yeah, check well, it wait, out. When, when, what is this movie called? It's called Without Remorse. It's in one of those Tom Clancy, you know, spy novels, and uh, Michael B. Jordan so is cool. the star of it. So you know, it's a huge movie. And yes. um, Patton Oswalt just tweeted it out because, you know, I have a little part in it. You know, just, I do my little news part. Of course. And, uh, you know, <gasps> it, it's blowing up. So <laughs> that is it's a good day to do so this. You're playing... <laughs> yeah, really? Mm-hmm. Wow. God was looking out for me. <laughs> 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 so, well, are you playing? Uh, you said you're playing a, re- a reporter in that one as well? Yeah, yeah. I play like a, a, a yeah, newscast. Yeah. So, you know, I'm more like a talk show host, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, well, are you all vaccinated and everything? How was that uh, set working? Or well, did you, you know, that, I guess I should ask. You know, sets are funny. You know, I'm, I'm always cautious on these sets because, you know, people will say it's safe, but I don't 100% buy that it's safe. I mean, I got my shot, but. Absolutely. You know, it's um, it's scary out there. It, least- yeah, I know. Well, and it's, it's, you know, you have to go by the honor system a little bit, too, because yeah. then you're like, well, did people actually get vaccinated if it's not required to show? Yeah, you know right. What I mean? Yeah. All of that. You know, mm-hmm. I, I thought it would be a little bit more, um, you know, control as far as verification of who's gotten mm-hmm. vaccinated and who, you know, who hasn't gotten back. I mean, they're, they're very good with the um, social distancing rules and such. But there are some times where you just can't mm-hmm. avoid it. For instance, if you're doing outfitting when they're, you know, putting clothes on you, tying your tie or. Sure. You know, creating your jacket or whatever they're doing, you know, they're right up in your face. So it's. Oh, I understand tricky. that completely. Yeah. Well, Jay, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. I, you are making our dreams literally come true. Oh, so, wonderful, and wonderful. All of the fans that are going to listen to this are going to lose their minds. So, so much to talk about. You are an enigma, sir. Uh, you are, do you do everything. It's so exciting. <laughs> Seriously, though. Just having fun. But, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, so I wanted to talk about your career, obviously. We're going to get into that, but I don't want to waste too much of your time. So, um, but also any time that you have, I will take it, obviously. I wanted to start and see kind of like where your audition was, your initial audition for that show was and what that was like. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, as, uh, you know, auditions go in Hollywood, what happened was at the beginning, when I first did that audition, I was just starting. As an actor, mm-hmm. you know, remember, I was a reporter, news reporter for 22 years before that. And so it was kind of fun to me. And uh, I did the audition and just didn't even think I would get the part. You know what I mean? Because that show wasn't really a big thing at the time. It was kind of a throwaway for NBC and they never knew if it was going to be renewed. So right. I went and did the audition. I don't even remember it, to be honest. And because <laughs> I just didn't think I got, the, you know, got the part. Um, and then they called me up. It's just and, another one. <laughs> yeah, right. That, that's that's what Hollywood is. You kind of just go through these auditions and see what sticks. And um, mm-hmm. you know, I got the part, and um, you know, went to the set, and you know, had a great time. Awesome. Well, did was that through your agent then? Yeah, it was through my agent. You know, because I, like I said, I was just starting in the business, and I just had had recently done Dexter. That was the first show I was ever on. Okay. Um, and uh, I think Parks and Rec was second. Okay. And so, you know, it was kind of exciting because I was on Dexter and it was a big show at the time. Sure. And, you know, my agent or manager at the time was really happy about it. And so, okay, try this new show and, yeah. you know, called Parks and Rec. And, you know, it's, you know, it, at the time it was getting very low ratings on NBC. Like I said, nobody really was thinking about it as a big show. Right. The first season wasn't that, wasn't that successful. Right. But, um, uh, you know, so I auditioned and here's the thing about auditioning. When you're auditioning for something that you don't think is a, big hit or a big show you're going a lot looser and that <laughs> right. makes you that makes your audition you know you're not so nervous and uptight because you know if the, if the show's a throwaway then you can throw away the audition mm-hmm. and i went in very loose with the audition mm. and i think that's what that's what was helpful and you know it just taught me a lesson to go into every audition you know with the loose kind of feeling that you know it's you know don't get too uptight about it right it's such a balance of like you care but you don't care enough that your whole ego is going to be shot if it doesn't get picked up or if you don't get it you know what i mean oh yeah and that's just mm-hmm. the nature of auditioning in hollywood once you do it you know 10 or 15 right. times and get rejected 13 or 12, you know 14 <laughs> times you just learn that's part of the game right it's and, just a numbers game know, at the end of the it's day it's a numbers game really yeah unless they call you for it you know what i mean unless they call you and you're competing against <laughs> other people but you know, that doesn't happen very often. 
Right. Well, what was your tell me about being a reporter? That's so cool that you got to audition as a reporter, because I read this review also that you had a studio where you were helping students with their reels. Is that right? Yeah, I was a reporter for uh, first ABC in San Diego and then CBS um, Los, in Los Angeles. And what happened is when you go as a reporter, you often have to take interns out with you. And, the, you know, it's me and the cameraman. And then we often will have to take an intern out to help them learn how to be TV news reporters. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, L.A. is very fast paced. You don't really have time to do a lot of teaching because you're trying to get information. Uh, and what I found was there are there were interns who were like, you know, I would pay you for this if you would, you know, just do this on the side and help me you know, become a reporter. So what I did was start at this school called the Los Angeles Reporters Clinic. It was very successful. You know, we have lots of national stars, for instance, Kerry Champion, who was big at ESPN, Mm -hmm. Um, Pamela Brown, who's, you know, a star at CNN, Shabani Joshi, who's, you know, Fox Business News. So we have a wide range of people who were graduates of my program who became, you know, successful reporters. Well, one of my students came in and she was an actor and I didn't know it. And I thought she just wanted to become a reporter, but she wanted to be a reporter on this Fox a TV show that was coming up. So we made her reel. And on those audition reels, I appear on the reel as a news anchor tossing to the reporter in the field who is the student and it's designed to look like a real news report. Well, she showed that to her agent or manager. And then the manager asked, uh, called me up and said, hey, are you interested in going on auditions? Because there are a lot of these TV news parts and these TV shows are out there, you know, TVs, movies. They always have some reporter or something. Sure. And I said, sure. And, uh, you know, that's how I got into the business. But it was really because I wanted to help a lot of these young people break into the business of TV news reporting because they couldn't make a demo reel. And that's what our class did. We made demo reels. Wow. Were you the one editing and stuff as well? Or did you have to? Oh, it was full on. It was, it was, no, no, it was full on. I was okay. the editor. I was the cameraman. We had a green screen and a teleprompter and an anchor desk and all that. And, you know, I put that all together. And, you know, mainly we would go out into what we call the field and do our reporting. And it was real news reporting. It was fires, you know, uh, murder, deadly accidents, whatever was going on in Los Angeles, because I had a little cable new, uh, TV news show here in Los Angeles called News Watch LA. And we would oh. put, yeah, we would put it on, uh, you know, Time Warner Cable every week. And so these reports were real that they were doing. And that's why I think the class was successful, because when news directors would see the audition reels from these people who wanted to become reporters at their stations, they knew it was real news. It wasn't mm-hmm. fake. So, you know, we were very successful with that. And I was the camera person and, you know, an editor and I would help write the scripts and, you know, teach them how to write a new script. So it was a lot of work, but I loved it. In fact, that's why I retired from TV news reporting, because it became more. uh, I loved that more than I was a real reporter, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, were so did you always want to be a reporter then? Was that something that you kind of knew early on? You know, it wasn't that I always wanted to be a reporter, but I always knew that a reporter was significant. Now, keep in mind, I grew up in the 70s. You guys aren't really alive then. <laughs> and in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. And in that time, the city was a very segregated city. You know, black families in the north, white families in the south. And I remember when it was the first black news anchor in Milwaukee. It was a huge deal when all the black community got around the TV to watch, you know, this anchor start his, uh, you know, uh, uh, something that was new and we hadn't seen you know, coming out of the civil rights movement of the 60s and, you know, in, in the 70s, seeing this, this was a big deal. It was a huge deal. Mm-hmm. So I knew it was a very important position to my family and to the people who I knew. And so, I, you know, I knew that one day I would pursue that. So it wasn't like I always wanted to be a news reporter, but I knew that that was important to my family. And that's why I got into it. Yeah. Do you remember that dude's name? Dennis Green. Yeah. Ooh, OK. Yeah, his I'm name was always Dennis interested Green. in the names. Okay. Yeah, his name was okay. Dennis, Dennis Green. Green. I'm gonna look yeah. him up. And I, were, I, you know, I think he died, but I, re- I remember he. Um, when I got into the business, he was working in Pittsburgh. You know, because people in the news business move around mm-hmm. and, yeah, everywhere. Right, and um, he, uh, I think he was working in Pittsburgh, and I reached out to him and I contacted him, and he was very thankful and appreciative of it. And you know, yes, I'm so glad you did important. that. I'm sure that really meant a lot to him. Yeah, Dennis Green, that was his name. I remember I saw him in person one time. I was starstruck, you know, as a kid. <laughs> uh, because my first my, my first job, I worked for the Green Bay Packers what? when they played at the Milwaukee County Stadium. And, you know, this, he would come out and do his reports from there. And I remember being starstruck seeing him. So it was funny. You know, life. That's, That's so wild. Cool. You're right? a Green Bay fan, right, Maddie? Or no? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm You're a Chicago right. girl. But, oh, my but goodness. I, this interview is over. I have to say, 
I love I love Milwaukee. I like oh, probably okay. one of my top five favorite cities I've ever yeah, visited. Yeah, I would live city. there in two seconds. Right. Yeah. So serious partying in Milwaukee. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, the cultures, right? Like bringing all the cultures. Oh together my goodness! Is, yeah, you got, that's what's so cool. Oh yeah, German, Polish. You got a lot of uh, Singalese, Africans. You know, it's just this mm-hmm. mismatch of people now in this this great city, except the weather. <laughs> you know, so. Right. <laughs> I know that's the one thing you have to like. Can I live when it's <laughs> negative 40 with wind outside right. every day right. in the winter? Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> Bitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so can you tell me about what your first day on set was like? Um, was it just one day? Was it multiple days? How'd that all work? No, it was one day. Um, you know, we were shooting on uh, what's called here in LA the Radford CBS lot because it's on Radford okay. Creek. And we were shooting on the yep. CBS lot. And it was weird because it was like, you know, uh, in an alleyway on the side of a huge sound stage. You know, there wasn't like yeah. a, uh, 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 big lights and cameras and everything and sure. everywhere. Because my little part was in that first episode that I was on was just supposed uh-huh. to be that one part. It, it, you know, wasn't a recurring character at the time. And, you know, um, the thing is, when you're around people who aren't used to being around a news reporter, they get shocked when they hear a news reporter doing his or her thing, you know, because the sound of a news reporter voice is different and uh, from what people normally speaking, but they're used to it because, you know, mom and dad had it on the house. Right. They've heard it. Right. Mm -hmm. So they hear that pentameter, they hear the structure of how we're speaking. And so, you know, when I started doing it, everybody kind of locked up and said, wow, this guy's a real news reporter. (laughs) And and they're like, duh. (laughs) Right. And so they loved it. And this one guy, I forget his last name, but his name was Dean. And he's one of the main guys at Parks and Rec. He really wanted me to play it up, you know, way over the top. Was it Dean Holland? Was he directing you maybe? Yeah, I think it was Holland. Yeah, I think it was Dean Holland. Okay, Dean Holland is, has worked on The Office and Parks. Okay. Uh, it could have been another Dean, but like yeah. he's huge in that universe. I want to say Dean Holland. I want to say you're right on that. Yeah, I want to okay. say I wanna, I want to say you're right with that. Because we did the reunion and he was we were talking to him. But Dean okay. is the one who really kind of brought the purred happily out. Because when I first did it, it was like a news reporter, you know, reporting live from so-and-so and so-and-so. And he says, mm-hmm. okay, go over the top with it, go over the top with it. And, you know, I wasn't really an actor. And even today, I don't really consider myself an actor. Uh, but at that time, I certainly wasn't acting. And so, you know, I didn't know really what to do except to go like way over the top with it and get super exaggerated with it. And that's how purred happily and his weird, you know, speech pattern was born. <laughs> So, you know, it it was, I'll give credit to Dean on that one. (laughs) Awesome. Oh my gosh. Dean is literally, it's funny you should mention his name. I mean, obviously he's so involved, but he's literally at the top of my list of person or people to talk to because he edited, he directed, he wrote. He is a lot of the backbone, I feel, of this whole like Mike Schur universe situation. Well, so your first, yes, this first episode that you were in is called Practice Date, and it's the one where Councilman Dexhart gets, like, his sex, sca- his first ever sex scandal. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> And yeah. so that first episode, truly, like you just said, it's just like a little snippet. Um, but did you get to talk to anybody while you were on set, or was it more like you just did your part and kind of left? Yeah, did my part and kind of left. Nobody was there. I hadn't met anybody. I, hadn't met, I didn't meet Amy or... Uh, anybody on the set, you know, because what we did, like I said, was like in an alleyway and they had this, you know, fake news van behind me. And, you know, it was the, um, you know, the B team that was shooting it. You know, you know, you'll have a team shooting and the B team shooting, you know, this, the little ancillary parts. So, Mm -hmm. you know, they were sitting, shooting my part. It was a handheld camera, you know, it was designed to look like a real news report. So I didn't meet anybody. You know, I did my part. I left. I said, okay, that was cool. And, you know, they called me back a few weeks later and, you know, it, it turned into something. Okay, so you said it, that was going to be my next question. It was about a few weeks after that they called. Because, I mean, do you know, sir, that you were in 30 episodes? 30! That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's more 30, than a 34, season's worth. actually. It was, the total was 34. Was it 34? Yeah, oh, my but, gosh. Uh, I counted 30. That's wild. Well, regardless, yeah. it is, uh, it's over 30. <laughs> yeah. So, I was wondering, though, okay, so did you... At the time, when when you did those scenes, those were in the alleyway. Where was Perd Happily's studio? Was that also at Radford? Okay, yeah, right. Everybody, most main, the main shooting was at the Radford lot in CBS and in, in in Studio City, right, uh, which is a community of Los Angeles, uh, and that's where they built all those sets. It was on the it was on the um, uh, uh, in the in the oh in the soundstage. 
Yeah. And I'm like, wow, is all this for me? You know, because <laughs> again, now keep in mind, you know, Parks and Rec people, a lot of those, most of those people were established actors. They, you know, they have done it, you know, they've done it for years. And so, mm-hmm. you know, they had seen sets and all sorts of things built for them. But when I saw the first Herd Happily set, the Herd with Herd set, I was like, <laughs> wow, you know, yes. <laughs> they're going all out. So, you know, at that point, I knew, it, you know, to really take it seriously and focus on, you know, uh, uh, performing that role as the way they liked it. And each time I was doing it better because I was learning really from the actors around me. Mo Collins, you know, yep. awesome actor. Uh, and of course, Amy Poehler, you know, learning from them and how to act and how to perform on set and how to hit your mark and how to hit your timing and that sort of thing. So that first time I saw that real set for Perd Happily, you heard with Perd, I knew, OK, this is serious now, you know, get your head together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did, how often or how far in advance did you get the script to see that you had your own studio? Um, I, you know, it was so many years ago. I don't even remember. I know, I know. We're bringing up a lot from. from yeah, time, but I have know. to I'm say, testing it was your about memory. Maybe, maybe a week because you know when you get scripts and you audition and you get the part, they'll depending on how many lines you have to say, they'll give you they'll give you the time to to work it out. And I'd say a week, but I think that second appearance of Perth happened. I'm, I'm not sure on this was when I was interviewing Tom Haverford and um, Ben Wyatt on the set. So there was a lot of dialogue for me. So I got to think yes. like a week or maybe two weeks in advance or something like that. So, Well, that's what I was going to ask. So that episode, we were watching uh, This is Harvest Festival for the listener that you're talking oh, yeah. about, I think, um, where mm-hmm. Aziz Ansari and uh, Adam Scott or Tom and uh, Ben are promoting it. And uh, Adam Scott is just like going off at you. And you had because he was just so freaked out. And I was laughing so hard. And I was looking at you and your face is so straight. And I was like, how is he doing this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Did you break right. a lot? Did it make you laugh? Or <laughs> did, were you just kind of stone faced? Well, you know, I, I can tell you, Aziz was the funny one on that scene, you know, <laughs> during the shooting, because, okay. you know, he's a natural comic. And mm-hmm. his facial expressions that he was giving me during that time was just hilarious. So the scene would break a couple times there. But when, um, you know, Adam is a very intense actor and, mm-hmm. you know, he's, he's, you know, you see him on, and he's a great actor, you know what I mean? But uh, when uh, behind this, when it's not showing, he's very intense, very focused on his lines and his performance. Sure. You know, in fact, when he didn't get a line right during the cut, he would do like 10 pushups just to get himself. <laughs> no, way. Yeah, no, seriously, every time. It's amazing. Yeah, to pump it, to pump himself up and then he would get it right. And, you know, we, we'd move on. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's, you know, these awesome actors I was working with. It, it, there was an intimidation factor there to a degree. Now, keep in mind, sure. I was a real news reporter and I've interviewed many, many celebrities. And, you know, my mindset was, you know, uh, I cover, you know, serious issues like, you know, uh, multiple fatality accidents sure. or, or, or new policies in the city council that could affect millions of people. So in my mind, you know, the acting thing wasn't very serious. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun, but I knew I had to take it seriously. So, uh, totally so, different mindset, <laughs> right? So, but mm-hmm. the intimidation of being around actors and established actors wasn't as intense as people, you would think because of that reason. Because I'd come out of a world of you know very intense people and issues. But mm-hmm. you know, Adam was very, uh, like I said, very intense actor, and you know, make sure he got it right. And you know, that's why you see his success now. So, yeah, totally. You know what? That's true. I didn't think of it that way. He was really intense in that one. So I'm sure that like took you into that mindset of being like, oh, God, he's being serious. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Right. And, you know, you don't want to waste, especially when you're the new guy on the block, you don't want to waste anybody's time. So, you know, you, you want to have your lines together and make sure you get it right. And, you know, that, that that's very important for, you know, if there are any would be starting actors who are listening to this or watching this, you know, you don't want to waste anybody's time on the set by not knowing your lines and not getting them right. So right. that was important for me. So Adam was more kind of an inspiration because that was his thing too. He wanted to make sure he got everything right. And when he messed up, he would do the push-ups, and, you know, we'd get right back to it. So That's wild. Did yeah. you have a favorite episode that you were in? Do you remember any of uh, which my favorite, ones? I, I think the favorite episode that I was in, which is not my favorite episode of the show, uh, but the favorite episode that I was in, I would have to say I was interviewing... Uh, Catherine Hahn, and okay, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and she was uh, a oh, big star. We love Catherine Hahn. I can't okay. wait to get her one day. Oh my oh, gosh! Oh yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I was doing an interview with her, and she was calling Leslie a dog murderer. 
And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it was a you know where a dog died or something. And she was saying, uh, right. and then I had I totally made up a line, uh, and uh, in response to what she said, and you know I looked directly in the camera and said it, and they loved it. And I knew right there that's one of the ways to get you know more camera time, and you know really pump the whole pump up the whole purr happily idea. So that was my favorite episode as far as what I was on only because of what I was doing as a professional actor or at least somebody pretending to be a professional actor. Of course. <laughs> well, when you get that first improv line, I feel it's such yeah. a big deal. Cause then you're right. like, Oh my gosh, I'm just playing. And it almost oh, right. feels like a yeah. weird kind of balance of like, well, I'm working, but I'm also like having a great time. You know what yeah. I mean? And, yeah. And, and you know, most of that, most of the cast, those are improv masters. You know, they, they were Absolutely. on improv training for years and so, you know, that was, I was kind of catching the bug on that episode. So that was oh, the one yeah. I remember the most. And that's very important. You know what I mean? You kind of have to find this milestone in your career, whatever it is, and say, okay, I'll build from there. And that's what I built from, uh, from that uh, episode with Catherine Hunt. Leslie's going to kill you <laughs> that one. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. That's amazing. What, you said that you had a favorite episode of the show overall? Well, no, my favorite episode overall is when they went bowling. That one was ah, just <laughs> hilarious to me, especially when, um, you know, Nick or Ron Swanson, you know, he goes up to Aziz, Tom, you know, Tom. And, you know, Aziz in that episode was bowling like, you know, in a really weird way, like he would throw it from between his legs. And, and, right. and Nick goes up to him, he can see you, man. That, that just <laughs> killed me. <laughs> Nick Offerman is incredible. I yeah, don't understand is. his right. genius. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he was just kind of getting started there, too, when we were starting to do Parks and Rec. Though he wasn't doing a lot of stuff before that either. And so it was great to see him, you know, great to see his rise, you know, because that character he was playing was awesome. Speaking of episodes, though, that you were on where you did some crazy things, um, do you remember the telethon one where you were doing the worm? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the worm, yeah. That was, a, that was a good one, too. You know what? That was a good one, too. So, And the funny thing about that is that... Um, you know, the day before, they called me and said, hey, Jay, would you be interested in trying out the worm dance? I said, well, what is that? You know, so we, you know, we look around the floor. Well, that night before, um, I got on YouTube, and there was a guy on YouTube who teaches you how to do the worm. Wow, that's great. And so that's what I learned how to do the worm. And I said, okay, let's go for it. And we took it on one take, and boom, you know, it's now time of, you know, TV history. But that's where I really fell in love with, you know, uh, Ron Swanson, Nick Offerman character, where he goes, you know, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing, her happily? You can curse, it's fine. <laughs> That was hilarious. Yes, and he's having his little night terrors and sees you on the camera. Yeah, he's his sleepboxing. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. That's a great show. The worm is hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the worm is hard, yeah. How long yeah. did you and, take you know, learning that? It, you know, it took, a, it took a solid hour, you know what I mean? But he really taught it in a way where you had to, you know, kick your feet out first, and that's how you roll up your body. The great thing about that, though, is, see, I do a lot of live appearances. You know, I'll fly around the country, and well, before COVID, and do these appearances where there's crowds and that sort of thing. And they love when you do the worm. So oh that's become, become kind of a signature thing. So it was funny. Well, and your outfit in that too was really cool. Did you get to choose that outfit or did they just give that to you? You had this like kind of 90s, like late 80s vibe going on. <laughs> no, that was, you know what? That was a wardrobe mistake. Nuh -uh. Because the producer wanted me in a suit and tie, <gasps> you know, they wanted that look. But the work, but, you know, they went with the 80s MC Hammer look. So... You know that that kind of made the made made the history of it with that look. Absolutely, but the yeah. producer really wanted me in a certain suit and tie, and that would be the joke of it. You know, this news reporter who doesn't get out of his clothes even for something like this. Oh, and my doing God. the worm. That is amazing. That's amazing. Maddie, were you going to ask something? I thought I cut you off in a moment. Oh yeah, well I I do have a question uh, regarding the the famous. I don't think I could even come up with it on the spot. The famous like purred happily like grammar. Right. It's like it's, <laughs> right. it's like its own language almost. Yeah. Um, and I know you were saying that Dean Holland kind of helped shape who Purd was. But was that kind of your call, the way that you worded everything or was that written? No, I give 100 percent credit to the writers of that show. Okay. You know, the writers of that show were, were genius. Um, I can't even remember their names now. because It's been so long ago. Oh, there's so many. Yeah. There's so many. Right. And, uh, you know, the, you know, the writers of that show created uh, the language of Purd happily. And actually, I was emulating an old news anchor in NBC with the way I was saying, I mean, NBC in Los Angeles and the way I was actually uh -huh. saying it. That guy's name was Bernal Chapman, and he's a retired news okay. anchor who was here in L.A. And he had this very weird, you know, speech pattern. 
And I thought it was strange that, you know, because he's, he's like was one of the big time anchors in Los Angeles. But he's up there very affected. You know, I'm Bernal Chapman and we have some breaking news right now. And he would do this <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> so I was trying to emulate, you know, some bird, you know, with Bird Happily, the weirdness of it, not exactly doing what he was doing. But, uh, oh, right. you know, that's right. The, and the not really saying it. what's going on, just saying, like, matter of factly, what's actually happening. Yeah, right. And it was just crazy <laughs> like that. But, yeah, it was the writers who, you know, who, who really came up with those great lines that, uh, you know, now are very popular to a lot of people who, you know, love them. So I give it to the writer. Yeah. Of course. Well, and it's the delivery, like what you were doing, too. Right. It's like the inflection on certain words and what right. that yeah, makes okay. it. too. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I took from that mm-hmm. anchor. For so that. it was a great team that you guys had to put yeah, put it together exactly. as a as a person. And you know, it's so funny oh. that you mentioned this. I was really I was thinking about today. In fact, there was an episode where there was a new director who hadn't seen coming in directing an episode of Heard Happy, but I guess she'd never seen the show, and she thought it was just going to be a regular news reporter. And so, um, I, you know, I did the line as Heard Happily, and she runs up to the desk. She says. What are you doing? No, you're a news reporter. You know, here, here, here is a news reporter. I'm like, well, you know, this character has a certain way he does it. And she said, but just to do it as a news reporter. And I think it was after that, I think it might have been Mike or it might have been oh Crawford. Anyway, somebody pulled the director aside later and said, no, no, this is this is the way, you know, he, he does it as Bird Abbey and that's the way it's done. So that was really funny, you know what I mean, to me, and where you started to build this character and they started to recognize it. And like you were saying, match it with the words, with the speech pattern, with the funny words. And it just became this, you know, thing. So <laughs> you're right on that. It was definitely funny writing that, you know, awesome writing that made that special. Yeah. Well, how was it working with Amy Poehler? Because you had so many scenes with her. Yeah, Amy is, uh, I mean, you know, you're fortunate if you're a, a young actor and get to work with Amy Poehler. Because what she does is an education. You know, it's like a master mm. class because mm. she is not only a, you know, a great actor, but she was also one of the producers and writers. Yeah. And so, you know, you you learn so much from her, like little mannerisms, little things. You know, it's, it's hard to even articulate it because it's things that you would way you would move your head to the right or to the left or you would stutter a little bit. And, you know, all of these little things that, you know, uh, made made sense as somebody who's naturally behaving in a way that they would behave and their, mm-hmm. you know, their eccentricities and uh, uh, the way they would, uh, uh, you know, talk and walk and move around yeah, and all these little them. things. It's really, again, hard to put into words, but that's where I really learned from. And I learned a lot from Amy and Chris, you know, Chris Pratt. So, you know, mm-hmm. I had all of these megastars that I'm work- <laughs> working with. If you're not learning, you're making a big mistake. Oh, right. Those two, I feel like, are just, like you said, they're our master class. There's very little miss in the hit or miss scheme of, right. of good lines. Yeah. And, I mean, she, she, like, started up right Citizens Brigade, which all of those people are in the show as right. well. Chris yeah. Pratt just, like, pl- is playful. And I think that's what I've been learning, learning the show or watching the yeah. show, is that you're just playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> in the character. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the beautiful thing, one of the beautiful things about the show was, and you probably heard this before, we would do these little things called fun runs where we would do the scene according to the script four or five times, which is typical. Mm -hmm. And then we do a fun run where you kind of make up the scene, you know, still based on the main points of the of the script, but you would just kind of make things up. And Amy and Chris and Aziz, they were, you know, masters at this. And I just didn't really know what to do. So I came across this stale. But. The beauty of that is it was supposed to look stale because it exactly. was a stodgy news reporter who's saying silly things. Yeah. So, you know, uh, that worked out great. And, you know, it's, it was, like I said, it's just, you know, a lot of the writing and the producers who put all this together and made it special as far as a very happy character. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Do you remember who came up with the term or do you remember your first time saying perverts? <laughs> One of the writers, you know, yeah, one of the writers, because I, at first I didn't get the line, you know, I didn't understand it because, you know, you'll get a, a script or called what's called a side mm-hmm. uh, and it's a little paragraph. And I really didn't understand how that was going to play. But then when I got to the set and I saw that there was a second set and there was a big board that said herd birds, you know, I understood and I finally got it. But, uh, you know, I'll, 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 I, you know, they're trying to be funny. I, you know, it's too close to perverts for me, but. I know. That's you know, what makes it so hilarious because like, right, your character, right. exactly right, though, played it as if he had no idea it was nasty. 
<laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> right? That's amazing. Well, and so that leads me to my next question then. So did you have to go, go in for like promo shots for the – because your, your face was on coffee mugs and posters and all yeah. this stuff. Like did you have to do specific shoot days for that too? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, they would bring in a professional photographer and they'd have the big, you know, uh, white screen behind you and, you know, all the uh, – uh, put parasol umbrellas. I don't know what they call them for photographers. Mm. And it was, you know, you knew it was, you know, like, okay, this is big time. This is new. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm coming out of the TV news world where that stuff isn't there, you know, other than like the anchor desk, but you know, not at that level. So it was cool. And I didn't know what it was going to be on until they told me, and, you know, in fact, right here. <gasps> Stop <laughs> it. Uh, oh <laughs> my God. Uh, I need one yeah. of those stats. <laughs> I want one. Yeah, this is this is from the Bird Birds episode. This <laughs> okay, is for the episode. listener, you guys, he's holding up a mug that oh, has okay, his right. yeah, bird on it. He still has it, that yellow, beautiful mug that he always has. <laughs> oh my god, that was whoa. I am yeah. I'm dead now. <laughs> Molly and I know what we're getting each other for Christmas this year now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, seriously. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, and for Purple's court, do you remember this one? Yes. Did, do you have to was that the same sound stage as well? And did you like what was that about? Yeah, that was the same sound stage. And remember, that was like the future. Right, exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. in, in the future. And, uh, you know, that was totally out of left field. I didn't see that coming at all. Uh, but it was an honor, you know, to be in those last few episodes because we knew we were ending something special. Yes. And any of the great shows that end, you know, with the, you know, when great shows are ending, it's always special. You know what I mean? From Friends to Cheers to. Uh, Seinfeld or whatever show people mm-hmm. watch, we knew the last episodes were going to be special. And it was great to be part of that. And then to come totally out of left field with, you know, the, um, the Purple's court. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Also side note, do you still talk to slash, was it fun to work with Brandy Max? The, I can't remember her name, but uh, the porn yeah, star. Myra oh. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah, Myra Marini? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're social media. We're social she media. She is friends. so great. I oh yeah her. yeah well, she's hilarious and you know she's done she's doing great and um you know we had uh we okay here's some inside information yes tell me everything <laughs> we were going to do some uh we were going to do some scenes for the final episode where you know brandy max was in bed and then she would say something and you could see a hump in the bed and you know under the covers and then you know uh, she would say something to me and then or to the hump in the bed and then uh, you know I'd roll over and <gasps> pop up and here's Bird Apley in bed with Brandy Max. Ah. <laughs> you know, so, but that was cut. That, I that need scene to see that happen. deleted scene. Oh my God. You know, it didn't happen. We didn't, we didn't even suit it. We didn't even suit okay. it. But, well, you I, know. I know, but I need to see that eventually. So oh, yeah. let yeah. me know that when you guys hilarious. get together and film that as a reunion moment. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, that would have been hilarious. But that didn't happen. I wish it would have happened. But I mean, you know, we, I, guess, I think they ran out of time or something. And they were moving on to their next show. So yeah. <laughs> Mm. Well, what other kind of like, do you have any other fun memories of being on set? Like what's something that stands out to you from being on there? Well, you know, just working with these great people, you know, it's not even so much the um, what I enjoy more is not the memories of working there, but seeing all of those people who I work with go on to do huge things. Mm. You know, I just mm. went to a, I just went to a private screening of Ben Schwartz's new movie um, that he did with Billy Crystal. And uh, it was awesome, you know what I mean, That's to see, amazing. you know, my, who, who be, you know, we all became friends over time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because we would always go to the functions, the end of the year parties, mm-hmm. the C series, C, uh, season wrap parties. Sure. And, you know, we eventually became friends. So it's great just to see everybody doing great. You know, Ron and Amy had their show. And, of course, yeah. Chris Pratt is, you know, mega star. Crazy. You know, oh, so yeah. it was awesome. That's, that's the joy. That's what I get the memories of fun, you know, because, you know, on the set, it's still work, you yeah. know, you're, you're still doing work. And, you know, I'd rather, you know, be home drinking a, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon or something, <laughs> but you, know, you, you have to go to work. Yeah. So you, you remember but what a as great work. job to have, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a great job to have. It was a great job. To have. But remember at the same time I was doing scandal. So, you know, it oh, was, right. it was at the same time. A lot of this okay. said work. Yeah. I was at the same time I was doing scandal and, you know, people got to keep in mind, Scandal, as far as ratings, was three times bigger than yeah. Parks and Recreation. You know, Parks and Recreation would get three, four million viewers, something like that. Scandal was getting 12 to 15 million viewers. Mm. And, you know, so there were two different worlds there where you would have people who were Parks and Rec fans, 
you know, you know, migrating to Scandal and then Scandal fans migrating to Parks and Rec. So it became work because you had to have you. Were, I had to be this responsible actor now. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's definitely schedules you and things you could like mess that. Up. Yeah. yeah. Well, how often did you ever record on the same day or like how was the schedule all worked out for you? You know, the incredible and beautiful thing of it all was both parties, both teams, uh-huh. the scandal team and the Parks and Rec team worked around. it. That's amazing. Wow. It, it, it really is amazing. And it's probably something that has rarely happens in Hollywood. Um, you know, it was like, okay, my agent would talk to one and then talk to the other. And okay, we'll put, we'll shoot Jay on this day. Because, you know, when you're planning to shoot, that's a week, two weeks in advance. Of course. You know, you just don't go to work and shoot. You, that, that's planned out. And, you know, it can't change. You know, it doesn't change. Mm-hmm. But they were able to work the scenes around my time with Scandal and my time around with Parks and Rec. So I did 34 with Parks and Rec and 27 episodes with Scandal. Okay. So it was a lot of that going on. And it was, and it was you know, very cool. So I love that. What were you, you so... What kind of reporter were you on Scandal? Like, remind me about that. I'm not as huge of a fan of Scandal, truthfully, if I'm right. being honest. But I know a lot of people are. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I was the main anchor. I was Mike Waters. That was my character's name. Okay. I was the main anchor of BNC News News Network, which is what it was called. So, um, Did you get to hang out with Kerry Washington? Not a lot. In, in, you know, in makeup, hair and makeup. Oh, right. <laughs> but, you know, my scenes were always in the news studio, and she wasn't in the news studio. Oh, gotcha. Um, okay. So... But uh, I forget the guy's name. He was one of the main characters, too. He directed a couple of episodes. Mm. And we got to we got to do scenes with, uh, you know, I got to meet him and we talked and laughed. And he was a fan of Parks and Rec. In fact, in fact, uh, Tony Goldwyn was a huge fan of Parks and Rec. Wow. Who was the, you know, who was Kerry Washington's partner. Right. Love interest. Right. In Scandal. The president, right? And, or no? Yeah, he was the president. Yeah, yeah, that's right. what I he thought. Was the president okay. in that film. He was a huge fan. So he came up to me one day when I was on the scandal and said, Hey, Jay, I saw you on Parks and Rec. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even, he, and he didn't know, you know, because Parks and Rec was first. But he didn't know that I was on Parks and Rec. So, you know, we had this funny little universe colliding kind of things going on. Uh, how was awesome. it going between those worlds? Because did you have to completely shift your mindset? Or was it something where eventually you got into a you know, state where you could be like, I can drop into these characters pretty easily now? Or did you kind of have to, you know, take a moment and be like, okay, now I'm going to the comedy world and now I'm going to the drama world? (laughs) No, no. You know, because keep in mind, the main part of my life at that time was my school, you know, doing the the Los Angeles Reporters Clinic and training all of these young reporters. So that was front of mind for me all the time. And acting was secondary mm. uh, in both cases, in Parks and Rec and, and uh, Scandal. So it wasn't like I was doing a major, you know, mental shift between the two because they weren't really that close sure. as far as timing of when I was shooting them. Because if I was scheduled on both, one would say, OK, we'll push Jay back. It was usually about a week. OK, so. It wasn't like I was, you know, had a hard time shifting. And then again, it's the writing on Parks and Rec. You know, anybody could have done that and, you know, they would have been funny. So, you know, Mm -hmm. I was just fortunate. You know what I mean? I was just fortunate. That's very humble of you to say, but I I see what you're saying, but you are pert happily. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, you made it for sure. Yeah, yeah. I I know now. (laughs) So now are these, is this something that people will see you down the street and either call you Mike Waters or pert happily? Is that, is that a part of your life? I never get Mike Waters. I never get Mike Waters. No one ever says Mike Waters. No, but it's always heard. You know, nice. it's always heard. Yeah. And so, you know, that's always funny. And the funny thing is right now, it's a lot of young people, you know, teenagers and, and uh, you know, younger people who are, you know, falling in love with the show because it's on Peacock Network and it was reruns and cable and that sort of thing, who have fallen in love with the show mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, always come up to me, you know, really starstruck. I mean, seriously starstruck. And that's that's something that's you know, you have to get used to because remember, I was a TV news reporter, so I had fans as a news reporter, and I know how that feels. Mm-hmm. But that's with different. Parks and Rec, yeah, with, right, with Parks and Rec was different, and I guess something, I don't know, but I, to be honest, I don't know what it is that people love about Per Happily, <laughs> but they love the character. You know what I mean? I know he's weird and different, but the people who I meet on the street love him. They quote his lines, they talk like him, they you know say funny things. You know, uh, trying to be per happily or, you know, uh, comment or, you know, repeat the lines. Sorry, I'm doing all these, you know, that sort of thing. No, that's exactly. I'm I'm having a cab myself. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's a great thing. Oh, man, we should have brought a drink. Come on now, Jay. Give us one. 
<laughs> no, I'm lying. Actually, it's Garnacha. It's Spanish <laughs> wine. You know, I study wine. I love wine. So <laughs> okay, I'm, uh, me too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have one, another one. <laughs> That's so cool. another one, like DJ Khaled. Says. <laughs> right, yes. yeah, DJ Khaled. <laughs> new album just came out. So oh, you know, nice. okay, prepared. cheers. Damn, I should have had a glass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see, this could have been the thing. Could have been our thing. <laughs> well, so okay. Um, getting back to the show, though, for um, one of my favorite lines. Speaking of people, come commenting you slash shooting lines at you um i really love the et one when you did a review and now that was oh, created yeah. like literally yeah. on the show i think it only aired like five seconds just not believable right yeah <laughs> right it's a heartwarming story but it's just not believable <laughs> et gets one and a half stars yes. <laughs> right that was a great that was a great yes. scene so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what Here's, here's something funny. I had never really wanted to spin off, you know, because I don't want to do all the work of a regular actor. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of homework. But if there was a spin off, I wanted it to be based on that movie review show that I was doing mm-hmm. that came up with that line. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so Wait, good. so who That'd came up with that thing. line? What's that? Who came up with that line? Do you remember who wrote it? One of the, one of the writers, yeah. Okay, I, okay. I don't know who it was. I think it was Andrew Yang. I think it was Andrew. I want to see Andrew Yang. Of course. Of course. Right. He wrote a lot of the Purr Happily stuff. Okay. And, you know, and, and, you know, but was also the, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, but he died of a drug overdose. Harris he was the guy, Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. He wrote the main initial Perd Happily stuff. Okay. He was the real kind of fire behind Perd Happily. That's what I'm told, at least. And again, I didn't really know these people. You know what I mean? I'd get the script from the writer. Sure. And on the set, you don't really, you know, get to know the writer. You, you know, they would introduce you to the writer. Sure. But the main people on the set, of course, was the director and the, um, the first AD. Right. So, or the, 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 and the, and the camera person. So I didn't really meet the writers, but I was told that, uh, you know, uh, he wrote most of the great lines for him, and yeah. then Andrew Yang and then Mike, you know, Mike sure took over right. much of the writing. Wait, I think it's um, Alan Yang because. <laughs> Alan Yang. Yeah, Alan, Alan Yang. Because Alan right. also, I am such a huge Alan fan Yang. of his as well because number one, he did Parks and Rec, but number two, he um, was the bass player in Andy's band. So, oh, was he? yeah, so he Mouth was rat. in a few episodes as an actor as well, too. He didn't have like, he had yeah. maybe like one line or two lines in the whole series. And then he also oh, created true, yeah. Master of None with a C. Right. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I could totally see how he would write the. The, um, that because he did a lot of like yeah, Sweetum yeah. stuff. He did. Mm-hmm. He wrote yeah, a lot of right. like the Kernstons rubber nipples stuff. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alan Yang. That's right. That's right. Thanks for that correction. Because if I see him, I say, Hey, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Have you been on set with those guys like any time recently? Besides, obviously, this new movie that you've got with Patton. Is there anything else that you've been working with that you've run into them? No, no. We haven't uh, done anything with those guys. Um, Let's see. I'm trying to think of something other than, you know, that reunion. But that right. was even on set. That was shot in my that was shot in our living room. That's crazy. Um, How'd that, that I would was love so to cool. know more about that. It was so good. How did you do that? Was that just on your phone and you sent in videos or no, how did that work? No, no. What happened was the producer sent all of the actors a big phone rig set up with a light and everything. Dang. And we did like a Zoom thing just like this. And, you know, um, they read the lines to me as if they, you know, the characters who I was talking to. And I would say right into the camera, just like we're doing now. Oh, wow. So, um, and they, you know, edited that all together and it came out to be a show. And, you know, we raised a lot of money too. So yeah. it, was, it was great to be part of that. Were you on camera with every actor or was it just you and the director? As in, for like, the, were you, uh, wh- who you saw? Like, who was directing you? Do you know right. what I mean? No, no, yeah, it was Mike and it was Mike and it was Dean. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, Mike and Dean. Okay. Right. They were doing. They were reading the lines, and you know, I would say them, and they would say, "Okay, Jay, set up the camera this way. We don't want to see that behind you. We want to see this behind you." Gotcha. And, but it wasn't you know, like you were seeing Amy or Mo Collins or right. anything on no. set with or on exactly. camera with you. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Right. Ugh, I love following her on Instagram. Which, by the way, do you have an Instagram, Jay? I do. It's it's uh, Jay Jackson Jazz. You know, my main thing is. I'm a musician. Okay, That's I did want to talk thing. about that too. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, 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 okay. All right. So we've got the 2020 reunion thing, which, by the way, listener, we kind of skipped over it. But if you are listening, you know that in 2020 they did the reunion. Um, and what did you raise money for? Was it just to go to the towards the CDC, or who did the money actually go towards? Do you? No, there was a nonprofit. I can't remember the name of the nonprofit. Okay, but, but it was it was, it was something that helped needy people, you know. And it was it's a very important organization, but I just cannot think of the name of it. Right no, it's now. probably because of it. This pinotage I'm drinking. No. <laughs> pinotage will do that. <laughs> pinotage. I'm going to say. I love That's that. That's a South African wine. The South African nice. wine. It's excellent, excellent wine. Yeah. Okay. One of my favorites. Okay, nice. 
nice. Yeah. All right. So yeah, because I'm into wine studies. You know, that's that's my big thing. Wine studies. Wait. So are you a sommelier? So, like in the show? I'm training to be a sommelier. Are you really? Yeah. I'm, what? I'm taking the, yeah. Dude, you're I'm taking life. the WSET test. I'm taking the uh, uh, CSW test. Um, all of those things I'm training for right now. That's what all this stuff behind me. Oh my me god, is. where <laughs> these are, are you? Maps. Okay, yes. Jay has a lot of post-it notes. They're beautiful pink post-it notes and very scheduled type yeah. A. I love it. It gives me very much yeah. joy to see it all organized like that. Yes. <laughs> those are wine regions, you know. You have to know all of these regions and appellations and, and vineyards and winemakers. You know, it's an incredible test. I'm not going for the master's test yet. I'm going for level level one. Oh my gosh. But you know the way that, that ties uh, right, into the already... show because Tom was wanting to have a sommelier for his new show uh Tom's oh. Bistro, that could be a spin-off as well. You can be the sommelier yeah. with Craig. <laughs> right, yeah. Well <laughs> yes. one of my okay, you asked my one of the favorite episodes. One of my favorite episodes was when um oh my god, oh my goodness, Chris's wife. I can't even remember. Oh, Rashida Jones. No, no. No, no. Um, oh, Chris Pratt's wife. Oh, April. Lord. April. Aubrey Plaza. April or Aubrey Plaza? Aubrey Plaza. Right. Okay. It's so terrible. I cannot remember <laughs> okay. the name. That's age. There were a lot of people. <laughs> but there was an episode where she was a somebody in a taster and yeah. she was judging wine. Remember yes. that? And now that I'm really into wines, I look back on that episode. It is hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. They were just totally over this the top. This was a with hint it. of robots' bathwater. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, or my God. Your mother's butt. That was another that. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes, so good. that writing, it's just incredible. Like you said, I think that yeah. even on the page without a voice to it, like it's really funny, but like the voice makes it come yeah. to life, obviously. Ugh. Yeah, sure. Oh my gosh. Sure. Okay, so we're, okay, Maddie, did you have any questions leading up to this point? Yes, because I know that we want to move into the music. And yes, um, but I do have two really quick things still on Parks and Rec. So the first thing okay. is you said that a lot of people love Purd. And I honestly, when I think about why I love Purd, it's because he's such a contrast from Joan. Right. Mm. Yeah. So Joan right. is like, I'm going to try to take people down. And Purd is just like, I'm here to do. Th-. It's kind of like a golden retriever. Right. I'm here to do the news and let yeah. me talk to people. Right. Yeah. So he's got this like yeah. innocence that he just really like wants to be in Pawnee, whereas like Joan is like trying to take it down almost. Mm-hmm. So I think that's that's yeah. what I relate to with Purd at least. Sure, yeah. Yeah, it was great working with it, it was great working with Mo. I think Mo yeah. is one of the most talented actors in Hollywood, period. And you know, I wouldn't be surprised to hear her getting big awards in the future because she really is talented and I would learn from her and the way she would mm-hmm. play it so over the top. Mm-hmm. I knew how to yeah. play it the opposite of that. You know right. what I mean? And she was, and she would always have like little tips and, you know, I could look at her and how she was doing things. For instance, there was an episode uh, uh, where we were at a debate Yes. and we were sitting next yeah. to each other and, you know, she would do her line and I would, you know, you know, a lot of those times I was copying how those real actors do their thing. You know what I mean? And I learned, I think I learned more from Mo than from any other actor on that, mainly because yeah. I was with around her more than any other actor, but. But Mo was the one that I learned from the most. And then, of course, yeah. Amy. But, um, but yeah, the way Mo would play that, you know. Yeah. Well, she <laughs> Joan has such Cal- a huge sketch improv yeah. background. She has such a background oh, with my that. Goodness, and she's so yeah. comfortable. Oh, and so yeah. fun. She was on 40-Year-Old Virgin. We talked about her. Yeah. yeah. Well, Matt, the Mad TV stuff was just, you know, TV. brilliant. You know, the Mad TV stuff was brilliant. You guys don't mind if I have a her- don't mind if I have a sip, do you? <laughs> No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, that's what we were talking about, too. Both her and Catherine Hahn, I feel, they can do so much with, like, one line. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, her and Catherine Hahn. And, you know, I, there's another uh, actor. I can't remember her name. But I think she was the star of that very funny movie, Bridesmaids. Is it Kristen Wiig? Kristen Wiig. That's who it is. Thank you okay. very much. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> she's very poor. I'm not a Hollywood. Okay, let me tell you something. I am not a Hollywood guy. <laughs> I don't know the names of Hollywood people. <laughs> I don't hang out in the Hollywood events. I don't do any of that. You're a normal dude. Yeah, man. I'm right. I'm just a normal dude who got yeah. a break, and that's what Kurt Happy really is. Yeah. But, but no, yeah, but was, you're, famous, Kurt. you're famous, Kurt. You're famous, Jimmy. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it, it's 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 Kristen Wiig, Mo Collins, Catherine Hahn, who I think are these similar type actors, and I think Mo Collins is head and shoulders above them as far as you know improv skills. And you now Catherine Hahn is great, you know. And remember, I've done such a couple of scenes with her on the show. But Mo is just, you know, really the one. And that's why she's doing so great with um, Fear of the Walking Dead, you know. So 
Mm. It, uh, it, it, it's no surprise to see that kind of success with her. Yeah. And Catherine Hahn's in WandaVision. I mean, oh, yeah. And then, people, right, she's doing great with WandaVision. Uh, people and then, slept oh. on Catherine Hahn. They were like tweeting about mm-hmm. her and saying, oh my gosh, how have we like not seen Catherine like be so amazing? And I'm like, y'all, she's been being amazing since the beginning. I don't oh, know yeah. For right. a while. Yeah. When she came <laughs> on set, I was like, wow, Catherine Hahn, you know, I mean, because there was a scene where, you know, a couple of scenes where we're sitting right next to each other on the set. And, you know, she didn't get her lines right a couple of times. And then, you know, you hate to correct people. But on set, they have to say their lines right for your line to make sense. Yeah. And a couple of times, you know, it was like, okay, you, know, you got to get this. And she goes, okay, 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 okay. You know, and I, and I hated to do it because I knew she was an established actor who, you know, was very popular mm-hmm. and far more experienced yeah. than I had. But, you know. Could you have improvised with her, too? Did you feel weird doing that? Or was it more of like, you know what I mean? Do you yeah, know no, no. The specifics of those the, the particular cases where it happened, you couldn't improvise because, you know, you were you were, okay. you were talking about something that you needed it to get to a certain like extent. She yeah. had to say a word or a phrase and I had to play off the phrase. Sure, 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 sure. You know what I mean? So, and, and then, you know, there were times, there were times where you're an actor where you will improvise and, you know, you will make the other actor you're working with say something and improvise with. And that happened several times with me, you know. In fact, the one I was telling you about, the dog murderer thing, that was totally improvised. Wow. So, you know, but Mo, 100%, 100% lines down. And that was always great to work with somebody. Because remember, the main thing you're trying to do is not waste people's time on set. Yeah, totally. So you ha- did you only improv like a couple times or did you like try playing a lot? I feel like I would be really intimidated, but you did so well. So I'm just I was very that. intimidated, very intimidated <laughs> and not very good, you know, yeah, very intimidated and not very good. And they knew it. And that was a cool thing, though, about, you know, Chris and Amy, because they're both master uh, improvisational actors. Uh, they were cool with it, you know what I mean? They say, okay, they laugh it off and, you know, not, you know, not trying to be forceful with it. Sure. But a lot of that stuff got on that on some of the outtakes. Sure. You know, there's a, there's a scene where I'm like a, a, a slam poet where oh. you have you this kind of weird poetry. And, 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 and I was improvising and it actually turned out to be very funny. Let me tell you something. I never really think I'm that funny. That's the number one thing. I never think I'm funny on the show. I know why people think it's funny and people laugh and it's, mm-hmm. it's funny to them, but me personally, I don't think it's funny for what I was, how I was right. acting, you know, just, you know, that's just, you know, you were just doing your job. <laughs> I was doing the job, but there was a scene on the uh, outtakes uh, where it was improvised. And I did think it was funny and it's on, it's somewhere on YouTube. I've seen it, you know, and it's, it's really funny the way they put it together, but you know, uh, it, being on that show, you learn a lot. And what I took away from improvisation has really gone into all the other work that I've done. And I've done so many shows since Parks and Rec. And um, I really, you know, give all credit to Parks and Rec, those writers, Mo Collins, Amy Poehler, for showing me uh, what exactly to do as an actor Mm -hmm. uh, on a set like that. Mm -hmm. And if they're young actors, again, listening to your podcast, that's what you do. If you get on the show, you have a small part, make sure you pay 100% attention to the main stars mm. and see what they're doing and then emulate it. You know what I mean? Why, don't try and reinvent the wheel, emulate it. And then you will put your own spin into it. And then it, you know, your own character comes off. Cause that's what Perd Happily was. You know, I put my own spin into it based on this anchor that I knew for Nell Chapman and uh, it created Perd Happily. And then of course the writing. Yeah. Ah, oh, that is amazing. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. Well, so what is this gig that you've got tonight? This, um, are you playing your jazz? Music? Yeah. What I'm doing is, uh, I'm seeing a, um, I'm seeing and performing at an Afro Cuban big concert here in, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Los Angeles, but there's a great, yeah. Okay. In Playa Vista by Marina Del okay. Rey. Uh, I lived in LA for about five years. Oh, okay. Um, and now I'm in Nashville and, uh, Maddie's visited there as well. So we're, we're semi familiar. <laughs> So I'm drinking. I'm drinking snake juice, and not really peanutized. It's snake juice. <laughs> you are snake drinking juice. snake juice. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Ron and the snake juice? That was yes, so funny. that's the, one of my favorite scenes ever. <laughs> right. And he's wearing April's hat. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> he's so stiff, you know, for the show, and then he's just totally out of it. Dude. Baba boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's Adam Scott, I think. Yeah. That was great. We quote that, that in my house a lot. That yeah. whole that yeah. whole segment. Great. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. But uh, okay, yeah, it's a, it's a great show I'm doing tonight. And uh, the main star of the show is a guy named uh, Luis Conte, who is a, a world-renowned Afro-Cuban artist um, who's played with Madonna, Phil Collins, James Taylor. You go down the list, Stevie Wonder, whatever. And uh, I'll be performing with him. 
So it's a big night. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate you guys being flexible on the time here. <laughs> Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah right. we get it. We we also met at Berkeley College of Music, so oh. we are musicians, too. Oh, you guys so are we get it. major, major musicians. <laughs> we there. get it. Everybody who's coming out of Berkeley <laughs> is, like, awesome. <laughs> well, see, now I, I refrain Thank from you. saying Berkeley College of Music sometimes because I don't feel like I'm as good as what people think that I should be. <laughs> but that maybe that's just my humbleness. No. I don't know. <laughs> That's my that's my self insecurity. But yes, we totally understand the gig life and changing everything. Manny just said that maybe the wine got to your phone too. Oh. <laughs> and you know what? It's not a pinotage. I'm sorry. It's a ganache. It's a Spanish wine. It's an excellent okay. wine. Okay, so before, um, okay, I just wanted to ask what we were doing before you had your phone um, got drunk was, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> was you have a song called Porn Star and I listened to it and you have a Barry White vibe going oh on. Oh my I God. I want to know what the inspiration was for it. I want to know everything. I went on a deep dive and I need to know what is happening, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Our inner musicians are very yes. curious. <laughs> but number one, congratulations for Berkeley. I know that is an awesome school of music, and I've hired lots of musicians from the Berkeley School of Music. So congratulations to that. Thank Porn you. Star is based Thank you. is based on an old girlfriend I had. I mean, you know, she was this like porn star had a body of great porn star and so i wrote this song around her in fact uh, in fact no and that, that wasn't her album because I, I have an, another album called adult entertainment that has a lot of these songs you know sexual in sexual innuendo involved yeah. in it and uh you know these were meant these were throwaways but you know i, I guess it got some airplay in overseas somewhere and you know really? I guess, oh yeah no yeah it's always some wow. download every day somebody's you know uh buying it off the uh, my distributor, which is called Catapult Distribution. So, okay. um, you know, it's funny that that show is. But the, the the big thing about that, and thank you for the very white thing, because I do do a very white tribute. But oh, um, I love that. Okay, yeah. no, I definitely got that inspiration. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I do a very white tribute. Because, you know, if you listen to the inner uh, music of very white, the songs that aren't the hits, he's very graphic with his music. Mm -hmm. I mean, very graphic. Mm -hmm. So Porn Star was meant to be, you know, taken from that kind of, that genre, which is called yeah. grown, the grown and sexy uh, uh, genre. So, oh you know, my God. Yeah. That's there's, awesome. There's a whole genre I was just like, Purd, what is Purd doing <laughs> singing about a porn star? <laughs> 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 but then obviously, you are not Purd, you are Jay, and yeah. that is you, and that's great. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But here's the thing. Here's, let me tell you something really important about that song. I, I, I think. One of the greatest uh, rap artists in the world is a cat named Micah Nine. He's incredible, yes. incredible uh, talent as far he's as rhythm. He's featured on that one. Yeah, right. He's featured on that's the really reason. That's the main reason I put that out because I wanted to, you know, I'm a fan of his. Like when I see him, I get all googly, you know what I mean? All, all starstruck because he's an incredible talent. And, you know, he agreed to do that little part on the song. So that's why I was happy to put that out. But, you know, mm. it made, made a little noise overseas. So I love that. Where did you start? doing your music like did you do this from a young age were you always a singer like tell me about that oh yeah no i trained piano classically from uh, a place called laduca brothers music academy in milwaukee it's kind of like it's nice. kind of like the birth it's, it's the it was at one time the berkeley or juilliard of the midwest okay. the, the laduca brothers music academy and then the owner was murdered and then i think it kind of just fell away but gotcha. um, I, I took four okay. years of classical piano and you know once you get bit by the music bug, or at least once it's activated, because I think you're born, a lot of people are born with it. But once it's activated through study and class, it stays with you. And mm -hmm. uh, for a long time, I didn't do it because, you know, college and then there was uh, the, the Navy. And, you know, I wasn't wow. focused on that. And then um, it was, uh, uh, yeah, I was on submarines. I was a submarine sailor for okay. one tour. And so uh, I, I dropped the music. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and then uh, I dropped the music, so I wasn't into it. But once I started to get back into a professional life, of, you know, being a TV news reporter, acting, mm -hmm. and, and that came back. So um, okay. you know, I took, okay. sing, took singing lessons again. And, um, you know, now we do these shows, and I love it. That's my main thing. That's my passion. Yeah. It's, it's music. Well, it, you know, you, acting is not. Right. Well, did you do the, like, for college, did you study reporting, too? Like, what was the first thing you got? Maybe jazz is your first love, but, like, what was the first thing that you were studying? Was that music, too? No, political science. Oh, my political God. Science was See, my, look at you. Yeah. You are 
everything. <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah, was You're my so main cool. Thing. Your whole story. Oh, yeah. Now, awesome. keep, keep in mind, you know, I was coming from Milwaukee, and Milwaukee is a very politically uh, divided city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, politically charged and, and, and just this divided city. And there were great, uh, we're called, called aldermen, but in like the LA, they're council members, um, uh, who would fight for civil rights and, and against injustice and discrimination. And, you know, it was serious. It was, it was a big deal. And so those were my role models. And that's why I wanted to emulate. And that's why I went, you know, study political science and, you know, be uh, knowledgeable about, you know, how politics work and how people work. Sure. That's what, you know, political science really is about, Zuan Politicon, and we're political animals. So okay, this um, is making more sense now that political science was the first start. Okay, I get it. Because reporting yeah. and the Navy, like it all kind of goes together. But then obviously right. the artistic thing happened. And now you are also an author. Maddie, did you know this? He is an author. He's written books. I did not know this. Uh, oh, yeah. That yeah. is wild. Uh, um, what, when did you start writing? Just really briefly. I wrote my, the first novel that got, you know, semi-published. It, was a, it, was, it wasn't a quite self-published, but it was, you have to kind of go hand in hand with this yeah, small publishing yeah. company that I worked my first book with. Uh, uh, but this was years ago. This was, oh my God, my first book was a great book that I thought that was a great book, but nobody liked it. People liked my second book. The first book was called Back Aft, which is about submarines, about a monster on a submarine. And then the second book was called The Scent, which was about, you know, a, a psychopath who was killing prostitutes in San Diego. And then there was also a monster in that book. But I just really, you know, I really love creatures and, you know, horror novels. And this was oh, be- long before acting. I, I Was it before? I don't know if it was before reporting, but it was around the same time. Because my first reporting job, I was a newspaper reporter. So that's a lot of writing, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Much more than TV news reporting. So I really got into the writing bug as a, TV, as a, as a news reporter for a, a little paper in San Diego called The Voice and Viewpoint. And um, that's where I really got into the writing. So I would have to say, oh, my God, 30 years ago, am I going to say that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Those words coming out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. But that really, that's really how I got into writing and, and the love of words and paragraphs and sentence and sentence structure and that sure. sort of thing. It's falling off now, you know, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll write another book. But these, these books I've been writing lately are short books, you right. know, like 75 mm-hmm. to 100 pages. So well, writing is a lot of work regardless. I mean, there's barely mm-hmm. any room for anything else if you're writing a book. You know what I mean? So you should write a memoir. That should be the next thing. Just release your diary entries and we'll all read it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. You People know. would definitely read that. For Oh, my gosh. There's so much in your life. You know, um, I am, here's the funny thing. I am actively not trying to be a superstar. And that's one of the things that would make me a superstar, you know, some book and it's, and I'm doing book tours and that sort of thing. So I'm actually trying not to do that because, you know, that would take up so much time sure. from my passion uh, mm-hmm. of, of, of music and promoting jazz music. You know what I mean? But yeah. that's a good idea, though. I'm going to keep I'm going to put that on the back burner. <laughs> For mm-hmm. sure. Well, so um, do you have any other gigs coming up or what else can we promote for you? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if you know, you probably can't tell from this camera shot, but I've lost. Uh, uh, 91 pounds since being purred happily and what yeah, i do you, is, amazing. you have yeah, been chosen frozen i yeah. do know that right yeah i teach people how to lose weight and that's the main thing you know it's free I, I don't make any money on the chosen and that's what you said the program is called the chosen frozen it's just a youtube channel uh what i do is i help people lose weight and that's you know big because it's about health really at the end of the day you know i was high blood pressure all kind of problems you know close you know uh to diabetes and that sort of thing. And, you know, the doctor said, you got to do this or you're going to, you know, be in the grave in five years. And I came up with this program. And basically what it is, is I'm going to say this on your show too, because I don't make any money on this. I just really want to help people lose weight. I eat 300 or fewer calories every three hours of anything I want until I go to bed. And that's it. There's mm. nothing more to it. Wow. Nothing more to it. And then okay. once you start learning how, once you start seeing how your body, you know, reacts to that, You'll say, okay, well, if I run a mile, that's going to make it even faster. If I lift weights, and and you'll start to develop an exercise regime around what you think works for you, not what somebody else tells you. So that's what I'm, you know, very proud of, the Chosen Frozen. We're helping hundreds of people right now who are, you know, and these are obese people. These are people who are morbidly obese, not, you know, uh, small people. You know what I mean? This is Mm -hmm. for somebody who is really dealing with a serious weight issue. And that's what I'm most proud of because it's helping so many people, you know, regain control of their lives. We're losing 70, yeah. 80 pounds. So that's, you know, anything else you want to talk about, we can definitely talk about the Chosen Frozen and wine. 
<laughs> oh, let me, okay, I am going to plug. Let me do a plug. Let me do a plug yes. for my YouTube channel. It's called Wine News Weekly. And what I do is I do uh, two-minute reports on the latest information about wine every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So Wine okay. News Weekly on YouTube. Okay, Wine News Weekly. Okay, you heard it here first, everybody. There you go. Right. <laughs> you heard it there first. Exactly. You're the first person I plugged it to, so. That's awesome. Nice. We'll, we'll, ta- we'll, um, we'll link it in the show notes and everything okay, as well. Okay, good, yeah. Um, but yeah, that is interesting. Is the shift in uh, as far as uh, mental health and physical health combining? I right. feel is yeah. really important. So lately, I've just been trying to think of everything as in as exercise as a part of mental health because Absolutely. that I don't feel has been you know really sold to us because everything is such a like the diet culture is just such a mess and so me absolutely and things so uh, it's it's really about finding what works for you so i'm glad that you found something that works for your body that is the number one for thing. everybody that is the number one thing find what works for you that i, I can mm-hmm. i can say that a hundred times because i tried keto i tried all of them south beach um and you know they work for a little while but once you find something that works for you stick with it and that's what i tell people i said this may not work for you um, but here's the thing about me, you know, I was morbidly obese. I was 310 pounds. I was way yeah. over the limit, you know, for a six foot guy, that's, that's way over the limit. And to the people who are in that territory, I know what they're thinking. I know what you're going through. I know the mental destruction that is, you know, that comes across you from the world around you because the world says sexy and beautiful is skinny and, you know, mm-hmm. um, right. that's what the world says, skinny and fit. That's what, you know, that's what sexy and beautiful, anything other than that, you know, you're an outcast, but what? Right, I, which what, just isn't the case at all. Right, yeah, which isn't the case at all because you know you contribute so much to the world that's so much more important than how you look. But um, mm-hmm. the uh, program helped people get control of weight, and for people who are obese, that's where our, that's what our main issue is, and we don't talk about it. We have no control, and what mm-hmm. this program does is gives you control. And yes. so many people are doing great on it, and I, you know, I did great now. Now, now, COVID has you know put on twenty pounds. But you know, <gasps> who hasn't? Who right, hasn't, you know, my gym man. closed. You can't walk around. It's devastating. Yeah, but I mean, you know. again, you just gotta like give yourself grace at the end mm-hmm. of the day because that part is just like you can control only a certain amount. It's like the serenity prayer. You know, you can only do so much. Absolutely, you can only do so much. <laughs> right, you know. Right, but you know, with information, you can do more than you thought you could do. So Absolutely. when you Education have that new information that you didn't know, right? Knowledge that is, you know. It, that's a big deal. So that's that's my plug. My wine news weekly and the chosen pro. Awesome. <laughs> and cameo, and then what cameo. Was... Join me on cameo. I'll, I'll that oh too. yeah. I mean, that's how I found you. That's oh, how I found you, Jay. <laughs> that's how I met right, you. Yeah, it's on cameo. We got it. Hello. <laughs> yes. Okay. So she I'll, constantly I'll says it's the best five dollars she's ever spent. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Right. That's right. That's how you reached out to me. So yeah, cameo is great. Um, but yes, for cameo, you also um, make like appearances for people right yeah. tell people what cameo is because well, that right. i think is new not many people know about that right and it's growing but cameo is an app that anybody can get where there's tons of ableist celebrities on that app and you know they set their fee and what you do is you buy you know you pay for the fee and you pay for them what you want them to say like you know oftentimes they're doing happy birthday or happy anniversary or happy mm-hmm. mother's day that's what we're in right now big around the holidays happy fourth of july um uh, and you give them these personal shout outs because they'll say, OK, my name is Jim. My wife is turning 40 years old. Please say happy birthday to her. And, you know, you end up doing these things and it's great. And enough. you can do it in character or do you not do it? A in lot character? of them people ask me to do it in character, but, you know, I, I won't do the whole thing in character because, you know, Kurt Happily yeah. is a is a copyrighted, you know, trademark yeah. uh, image. And I have, you know, they say, OK, right. be Kurt Happily. I say I always have to say I'm Jay Jackson, a.k.a. Kurt Happily. So, sure. and, and that's very important there. So I don't really do the thing, the whole things in, in Perth Happily, but I do say a lot of Perth Happily lines and that's what they like. Okay. You know, I do the, you know, line, for instance, for a female perspective on this story, we now turn to a woman. And so they love that sort of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh my God, I now, love now that. Now keep in mind, I looked you guys up and, you know, yeah. there's a website that's, that lists the top 10 Parks and Rec podcasts. And you guys yeah. are on that. So, you know, you put me on that. What? what? Great. No, we're not. Y- are yes, you serious? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> oh, my yeah. whole week was just made. Are you serious? What's I, happening? I been... Remember, I'm a, ne- I'm a news reporter, so I research. And what happens yeah. is. I'm getting hot. No, there was, a, there was a website that lists you guys. I think you were number four or five. Might be six. 
but uh, I'm gonna go jump off a cliff right, right now. Yeah, this is the top <laughs> ten. Oh my god, I have to look that up. But thank you. I have been working really hard to make sure that we're searchable. So I really <laughs> hope that that has helped. But tell me, okay, before we let you go, I don't want to take up too much of your time. But um, before we let you go, what is your Instagram? And um, what is your Twitter? Where can people find you? Okay, everything is J Jackson Jazz. So just remember, okay. J-A-Y Jackson Jazz. And that's going to okay, be excellent. Instagram and Twitter. And um, Facebook is just, I think, J Jackson. But more importantly, my website is jjackson.org. So okay. J-A-Y, right. yeah, J-A-Y Jackson.org. Because I'm a, you know, I do short films. I do a lot of short films. I want people to see my short films. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. I'll link everything in the show notes, too. But that's good to know. Um, yeah, you've got a lot. You're a hustler. You got mm-hmm. the hustle. In yeah, you. right. Yeah. You know, I, I, did, you know I had a full career as a news reporter. And, you know, it was wonderful. And I loved it. But now I'm doing me. And, you know, yeah. I love it. So you're doing what makes you happy. Yeah. And do you have a character that you resonate the most with? Or do you have a favorite character other than yourself? Mm-hmm. Can't say yourself. <laughs> On Parks and Rec, do you have a favorite character? Favorite character is Jim. Jim O'Hare. I tell him all the time. I think he's oh, a Jerry, oh, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry, Gary, Larry. <laughs> I tell him all the time. Jerry. Yeah. We haven't had anyone say that yet, so I'm so excited oh, that you Oh said yeah. That. Yeah. Well we're on this we're on this YouTube show called Liza on Demand. And he has a recurring character on that. I just shot a scene with him. And uh it's oh. it's a great show. And you know, I I, I just shot an episode and I, I was hoping I was going to see Jim there, but he wasn't there the day I shot. So, but it's called Liza yeah. on Demand. Check that out, you can. Yeah, for sure. Because I wanted to see him because I hadn't seen I hadn't seen him in years. You know what I mean? And I always tell him secretly. I said, "Man, I think you are the funniest person on this show because oh, so it's so under his character development <laughs> from the beginning of the show right. to the end of the show yeah. is just phenomenal. Yeah, right, Ugh. exactly. Oh, my God. And then what's this new movie again that's in on Amazon Prime? This new movie is called Without Remorse. It stars uh, Michael B. Jordan. And it's um, a, a movie about, you know, it's a spy thriller. So, okay. you know, it's going viral now, thanks to, uh, or at least my appearance on it is going viral now. Thanks yeah. to Patton Oswalt's tweet, uh, tweet this morning. Oh, so, I love Patton Oswalt. What a sweet man. Oh, he's funny. He, he, and he, right. He's a sweet man. You know, he's a sweet mm-hmm. man. And I, and I, the reason I he's say that is... He's been through so much and still brings comedy. It's just... Amazing. Oh, yeah. We did um, we did a, a, a reunion interview. It was called the Paisley Center here in Los Angeles. I think it was the 10-year reunion. And uh, Patton was there. And I was my job was to introduce Patton, bring him on stage. And before that, we talked. But he was a great guy. And he knew the park. He knew curb lines. And he laughed. And we talked. Oh. And, you know, we bonded. And it was great. So... <sighs> You know, that's Hollywood. Yeah, he's a treasure. Yeah, he really is. I mean, every interview I see. And you know what? We were talking about this with a lot of the other guest stars and just like people. This, it's it truly is who helmed the show. Like Amy Poehler, Mike Schur, Greg Daniels. I don't think that they have bad people, like evil people in their sphere. You know what I mean? Yeah, it right. just seems like everyone I talk to are, are genuine, nice people. Yeah, and that, that's one of the rare joys in working in Hollywood because, you know, there's a lot of assholes Absolutely. in Hollywood. I mean, I would say right. 70%. <laughs> so you have to kind of, <laughs> you know, maneuver your it's way hard. through this battlefield because everyone's fake. Yes. Everyone is fake in Hollywood. Everyone, everyone is fake. <laughs> everyone is phony. Well, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we got to build a good world. That's the thing. Yeah. We can change yeah. it. We can make it happen. Well, you, the, the thing is, here's the thing: you have to, you have to pretend that you, you know, really like people because you never know who's going to help you in the future at Hollywood. And you know, these people could be total jerks. I mean, out and out jerks. Thankfully for the Me Too movement, a lot of that's being cleared out. But, you know, it's yeah. still there. Well, I challenge you to not be, like, nice to them. Mm. Just be cordial. Yeah, that's, a, you know that's what, what you have to be. You don't have to be fake. Yeah. That's what I mean. You don't, not, We don't need to be fake. Oh, okay. I challenge you. Yeah. Yeah, that won't work in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay, that thanks, um, I guess I won't have my career. Yeah, you can try that. Okay, you we'll come that. to Nashville or Atlanta. We'll see what we have for you, you see, here. Cordiality <laughs> in Hollywood means you're going to get run over. And that's the sad part about it. You know, they just because they're assholes. I'm sorry to curse on your show like this, mm. but there's so many no, you can't. who are in power of position, a position of power, and that's just become the uh, way of behaving. So, you know, you, you, you try and be nice and cordial to them and, and, and you're, you know, polite. But if you have to turn on asshole, turn on asshole, too. And turn it right back. And that's when yeah. they start to listen. No, that's true. So. That's tr- I mean, I'm not saying to be a doormat, for right, sure. Yeah. you got to stand up for yourself at the same <laughs> Absolutely. time. You know what I mean? But no, you're right, though. <laughs> you know, try and be the better angel, but it's very hard. <laughs> oh, it's so hard. It's so hard to 
be nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jay, thank you so much for yeah. your time. We so appreciate really. this. This was so fun. I hope you had a good time. Holly, this was awesome. Natty, this was great meeting you guys. Yeah. Great to meet you, too. We'll break a leg at your show tonight. And, um, yeah, we'll keep an eye out for you, and I'll post all the stuff. Go follow Jay on all the good things on all the socials. And, um, yeah, thank you so much, Jay. Okay, thank you. Thank Have you. Have a great one. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a drink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> drink some wine. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> all right. Bye. There's a park and some pals, and there's also therapy, too. What a time. What a guy. Right? What a guy. Yeah. Damn. I hope everybody really enjoyed that and getting to learn more about Jay Jackson, a.k.a. Perd Happley, Mm -hmm. the man behind Perd Happley. (laughs) Right. I just like, how does he do all of these things? Yeah, I. he is my spirit animal because (laughs) I feel like I'm also that way where I have five million things I want to do except he's successful at it (laughs) like he's doing everything and that's the thing it's like I don't even know if it's about the success for him it's just he's following what makes him happy um and luckily I think per being purred and in all these other tv shows like scandal and whatnot also uh like gave him the financial stability to probably follow those things Mm -hmm. because I don't like we talked about not even many people know that he is a singer or you know a novelist or does all these short films and stuff like that but he's just doing what he loves to do which is and training to be a sommelier oh my god Uh, (laughs) oh my god speaking of which I will link all of this in the show notes but yes he talked about how he has something on YouTube called the wine weekly news uh wine news weekly right Wine News Weekly, I think, yes. Uh, I was dyslexic on that moment. (laughs) But but anyways, uh, yeah, so I will post that as well. Follow him on Instagram at jjacksonjazz. He also posts all of his stuff that he does on there, too. Um, And go see that new movie that actually just came up on my Roku uh, that he's in with Michael B. Jordan. Go see that, which, again, I will link. Um, Chosen Frozen is another one that, you know, he talked about his uh, weight loss program, which is kind of amazing. That's wonderful that, you know, he's finding what works for him. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, like we talked about, find what works for you. Do not go on this and try it. And then you're like, you hate it and you're not losing weight or whatever, like, or that goes for any diet. So that's my little soapbox moment. Um, oh, also I was going, I'll post this in the show notes again. But so when he mentioned that we were like on the list of parks and rec podcasts or whatever the hell that is a thing, um, it's not the Apple podcast, like you know, official link or anything like that, but it's a blog that lists Parks and Rec uh, podcasts, and there are quite a few, and we're, I think, number six out of ten or something like this, which is kind of amazing that we're even on the list, because yeah. I <laughs> did we're not so, know that. We're still so no- new, too. <laughs> right. Um, so... Obviously, my perfection is not going to let me rest until we get to number one. So, uh-huh. ladies and gents and non-conforming lovelies, I need you to go subscribe and rate and review so that people follow us. Um, and, yeah, I mean, regardless, though, truthfully, for the people that are don- uh, donating, oh, God, that see, that was manifestation. I need people to donate. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, but for the people who have listened and are still in this with us since the beginning or even who just started and are giving us really positive feedback, I cannot thank you enough. We are so excited to be able to talk to these people and bring this to you guys. And hopefully we are doing well for you and speaking on behalf of the fans because we truly are fans as well. And I just I hope that you guys are finding love and entertainment in this too so because that's why we're doing it you know what I mean I just hope you're feeling good you know and then let's see oh yeah cameo um go pay him on cameo to make a fun video for you again that's linked as well there's always an occasion where purd can say hello to you or your family member or whatever um but he's a busy mother effer so (laughs) um uh, go ahead and follow him on all his things watch that new show and um yeah all right well do you have anything else to say, Maddie? No, I just uh, look forward to more amazing guests, guys. Yes. Hopefully we keep piling them on. I just, uh, I can't believe it's happening. I mean, I can believe it's happening because I've worked really hard. We've worked really hard at like You've worked them. really hard. <laughs> well, we still have worked hard.
hard like scheduling and making sure everybody mm. is available because doing it for three people yeah. so it's all a team effort but like I definitely have been vigilant and being a creeper on some people. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad it's paying off yes. and being tactful helps. And these people are just so nice. I can't I get over it. They really liked their time and they really uh, enjoy the fans. And it's just, it's really nice to see. I know. And also shout out to anyone who got their second vaccination. Good for you. And I hope that you're like living and breathing because our second shots were no fucking joke. They were really hard and I had a really bad fever and Maddie was also out for a long time as well. So hopefully you don't feel it at all. But thank you again for listening. We will see you next week. And um, yeah, give us those likes if you can. But if not, we'll just see you next week. And we're glad that you're here. Okay, bye. There's a park and some pals and there's also therapy too.